LeBron James fresh off a 32-point game, too, including some clutch baskets and free throws for a guy who's sometimes chided for not coming through in the clutch. 12 for 12 from the free throw line, some late to put it away in the Heat game two victory to set up game three tonight here from Miami. And we are welcome, or we welcome, we are joined by the commissioner of the NBA, David Stern, presiding over by my count, your 29th NBA Finals. Is that true? I don't count. If my anymore. math is correct. I stopped counting at 25, so uh, I don't know. Are you what sure it is. that's true? I, if I my math it was is 28, correct. but okay, 29. No, it's 29. No, you took over in 84. Okay. I, yeah, I, I believe yeah. it's 29. Oh my, I feel so much older already. At any rate, uh, congratulations. I, think I had a lot to do with that. You had a lot to do with that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you, had, you definitely had something to do with yes, that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I've been all over the world with these gentlemen, okay? From London to Tokyo to Munich. Yes. Uh, and we're not even talking about the Olympics. We just returned from Oklahoma City, uh, the smallest TV market to host the NBA Finals since Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, interesting contrast not only between markets here, but between the way these two rosters were built, as, as somebody put it, homegrown versus store-bought. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, with the new CBA intact and, and some of the provisions kicking in over the next few years, how likely are the, the rosters of future Finals teams to change versus what we're seeing here? They're going to stay the same. They're, if teams that get under the cap can go out and get free agents, teams that do badly will build draft choices. And we think that, but but it will be a more of a parity to it, because it won't be about market, it won't be about money, it's going to be about management, because everyone is going to more or less have the same number of chips. You know, I, the, I have suggested with the lottery, obviously teams tank games to, oh my God, to, yes. to get extra balls. <laughs> it has been suggested. Yes. Why don't you go to, and, and I think that's really unfair to the game, and right. I think it's unfair to the fans. And, and number one, the number one, the worst team never gets the number one draft pick in anywhere. the lottery. Yes. Right, that's right. Have you ever considered going back and just giving every team that's in the lottery just one ball? Yeah, but that's not fair because this way we know that a lottery team is going to get it, and most times it's going to be either one or five or seven. We changed the slant after Orlando got Shaq and Penny we said oh we can't let them we can't let Shaq have too much help so we still it's you know at that point if you wound up with the team that won the championship getting the first draft pick no no I'm talking about just the team that's in the lottery you meant just the lottery oh, team. just the lottery, just, picks. Just lottery one team. per, no, uh, one that's, per. But then, but then it, since it is even over time it will be distributed evenly and it's not fair when the 11th team gets it you really would you know now it really does favor the top three or four teams. But That's the way it is. Well, you you potentially last, have a team that just missed the playoffs I, because of an injury that, but, or something. But when has the, the, the worst team got the number one draft pick? But it that's less important than the grouping that might get it if you're three or two or four that's okay but not 10 or 11 if you just missed the playoffs as matt said okay yeah. you've been doing this for 29 years uh when there's legendary matchups in the finals magic bird you know jordan malone uh lebron durant do you pick sides i never pick sides but i want to argue about legendary every the way it gets to be legendary is if the players become legends. So Correct. don't sell yourself short. I was here not that long ago to see Shaq and D. Wade win the NBA championship. Oh, yeah, I even, was. I oh, even yeah, remember was being in ago. Phoenix where I thought the, we were going to game seven. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I never thought that Michael Jordan guy would make it. I thought he was yeah. a flash in the pan. I, he, I thought we were going to game seven, and there it was, you know, six games and out. But uh, we've had a lot of great great finals and actually you define the players after their finals and after they win right. to see what they're doing. All right, end of game two. The Thunder are down two. Kevin Durant has the ball in his hands. The situation, exactly the situation you want as the NBA commissioner, guarded by LeBron James. There is contact before the shot, but no whistle is blown. And afterward, people are up in arms that a foul should have been called. You know this conversation is coming as it's happening, I'm sure. What goes through your head? Not so much foul or no foul, but what am I dealing with now in terms of the criticism? No, it's a it's a fair criticism. The referee misses the call because he was in the wrong position. That's fair. I would rush in to add they had a foul to give, so it's ball out on the side, which right. no one is commenting on. And then 
they'd have it again with a couple of seconds off the clock. So we'd have to see. But but th there's a there's a legitimate uh, complaint. Isn't that amazing though that like you're sitting in the stand watching the game and you get to blame? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You know what? You once did something. Maybe it was on Philadelphia. Once. And I and I find Harold Katz, the owner. I said, "You're what are you talking about? I was lying in bed. Why are you finding me? Because Charles went off. I said, because someone has to stop him and you have to. So it's sort of the same thing. As long as I'm in the arena, I'm ready for the blame. Okay. Um, it, it should be directed to me. Uh, I've got about five things I want to ask you. I'm told I have time for one more. Go ahead. I'm going to pick um, the Sacramento question. That seems the most pressing for the league to me. As folks at home may know, an arena deal was apparently struck in March. Uh, and then it, did, it disappeared right. in April. Where do we stand now in terms of the Kings' future home? And is there now a deadline to either strike an agreement or seek out a, a new home? There is no deadline. The ownership has said that they're going to stay in Sacramento and they're considering remodeling the old arena. If it is brought up to a better standard, I think they'll be happy there and it would keep it there for a number of years. Uh, it was their right not to go forward with the deal and that's fine. And I love Sacramento because the fans there, you know, anyone that gets Phil Jackson upset because of cowbells, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, you know, Phil never gets upset. You know, I got one more question. I, I know that we got to go. This but is I want, NBA I, I, TV. Yeah, yeah, Just go ahead. So the Olympics, I think we obviously accomplished our goal, making a, a universal game with the first dream team going forward. How important, number one, is for us to win the gold medal or send our best players. Are you content now if we don't win the gold medal and we don't have to send our stars every time? Well, I, I, I look at it differently, Charles. Guys want to participate in the Olympics mm -hmm. and we shouldn't stop someone who wants to participate. And always think about it in the context of your international players who have a much stronger tradition. You know, they'd go on one leg to play and it, because they're so committed. Nowitzki, Ginobili, mm -hmm. Scola, you know, they just are they're great guys, great players, and they play for their country. But I can, I, don't, I, I have to be careful. I, I think that whoever wants to go should be, you know, have an opportunity to go at this point. But they don't have to, we don't have to send our best players. We have to send the best players from among all those who want to try out for the team. Are, are you still interested in the, the possibility of an age maximum? You, you talked about an under-23 model like soccer does. I think that that's an interesting idea that we should discuss. So a young player, who, when he's, he could be 19 in the year the Olympics and play and 23, and then, you know, he won't have people coming to him like I came to Charles and said, Charles, you got to play in 96, even though Shaq was going to complain about his minutes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Charles was, people don't know, they're watching the Dream Team, and here's Charles, the elder statesman of the 1996 national team. Dragon Shack, and <laughs> the Dragon Shack up and down it the court. It wasn't You're easy right. for you, I know. <laughs> we've, we've, uh, we've got to let you go quickly. Flopping, no flopping. Are we going to get it done in competition? We committee? are going. going tomorrow? I, I yeah, don't want to preempt. It, we're going to stop it. Okay. Stop it. Or at least we're going to have a better system for dealing with it. No question about it. Everyone wants to stop it. Too late it. now. Me and Chuck retired. Well, yeah. And so <laughs> did, <laughs> and so did Reggie. So ago. did Reggie and Vladi right, Divac. Yeah, yeah. Vladi <laughs> Divac is no yeah. longer. Yeah, well, I, I don't know where Reggie is right now, but he's probably kicking somebody as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner, great to have you with us as always. Enjoy the NBA Finals. Thank you so much. I always do. Thank you. The Commissioner of Thank the you. NBA, David Stern, with us here in Miami. On the other side, David Aldridge with Dwayne Wade back at home for tonight's Game 3.